Hello everybody and welcome to Matthew Gardens the Globe where we talk about agriculture, horticulture, landscaping, gardening, and farming. And what am I doing? Well, I'm looking up for morels. Morel mushrooms. And what I'm going to tell you right now is that the types of trees that you're looking for have everything to do with whether you find a lot of morels or not. So let's go hunt. Look at this oak just leafing out. It's in full flower and tassel. This is what I'm looking for. So you get to get into the forest and know your trees. And right now, I'm in an area heavy with western red cedar. Now I don't think that the cedar are a very good host, but intermixed in here are other trees like oak. There's some wild persimmon in here. There's some dead trees. We might find something around a dead tree. So let's see what we can find while we're in here. Now realize that finding mushrooms there's really not a map to find them, but there's other ways to figure out when they're going to happen. One of them is soil temperature. I heard from an old timer through a friend that when the soil temperature at four inches down plus the air temperature equals 115 degrees, that's when we're going to find morels. So we're looking at these trees and going, what kind of tree are you? Well, you're going to look for ash trees. You're going to look for dead trees. You're going to look for oak. Look at this tree. Not what we're looking for. Anyway, it's a little early. I don't think we're going to find anything. But it's not because they're not here. Now here's something you can do. Get into a heavily leafed out area and look for other signs. There's other mushrooms that come up ahead of them. I, I've read about them. They're called the Pizzellis. Pizzellis. I'm not pronouncing it well. But you can see them. They're the cup fungi. They're a distant relative to the morel. Now, what I want you to know here is we're digging away at the base of the duff and the leaves here. And all I see is footprints from deer. Yes, wild animals are here. The deer are here. There's turtles and tortoises and moles and voles. There's wild animals like squirrel. They're all here foraging for food and they like mushrooms too. So if you don't find any, it doesn't mean that they're not here. You could be here at the wrong time or the wild animals could have gotten to them. Look at all these different hoof tracks. Within about a square foot, I probably have eight or ten different hoof tracks here. And what I'm looking for is the actual mushroom. What people consider the mushroom above ground is the fruiting body. It's like an orange on an orange tree. But what we're looking for is white. See this whiteness here? There's a little bit of whiteness here. Okay, that's the actual mushroom. It's threads. They call it mycelium, which is basically threads of the organism. And once a year, or sometimes not every year, but skips a year, the mushrooms will go into reproduction. And that's the mushroom that's above ground, the fruiting body there to release spores and to complete the, the life cycle of the organism. But the vast majority of the time, what you're going to find is that the mushroom is this downy, whitish material. The morels are actually kind of a brown. And I'm looking for it, but not really seeing it. One of the things that you'll find just ahead of a mushroom pushing up is something we call primordia. It's kind of like budding. Okay, it's where, where in plants in early spring they'll bud out. Well, mushrooms do the same thing, except for they call it primordia. It's these, where the mushroom is funneling its energy together. Oh, here's, some, here's a mushroom right here. Look at this. See this whiteness right here? 
that's the mushroom, okay? And for every 10 pounds of that whitish stuff here, you're gonna get approximately one pound of fruiting bodies, which is the part that we eat. Here's something else, it's like a, a nut that's been parasited. So right in this area, we have a lot of mushroom activity. I don't see primordia. Primordia would be these little bumps coming together, but let's search around and see what we can come up with. You can see that even this mushroom, there's a lot right in here, it's mycelium. A lot of this has been trampled by deer. It's very active right here. So realize that the mushroom organism itself is these white threads. Okay, you pick this stuff up, give it a smell. It smells earthy, it smells mushroomy actually. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be white, it can be different colors. So, what I'm looking for is primordia or the beginnings of fruiting bodies starting to happen ahead of time, forming these little nubs or these little buds uh, ready to push up and, and start forming mushrooms. One thing that's different from plants, and you and I, we grow through cell division, okay? Mushroom fruiting bodies are actually constructed. So the organism, that is the mushroom, starts pulling its resources from far and wide and transporting nutrients and building blocks, and the mushroom is actually constructed. This is why mushrooms tend to come up overnight. One day they're not there, the next day they are. They're primarily different from other organisms in that they can funnel energy in and around and actually build things. And the whole word mushroom, think of mush. Well, they also self-digest each other. Um, their fruiting bodies will tend to actually turn back into the soil. And this is actually the mushroom deconstructing its, its fruiting body. Can you believe that? They're taking the energy that they put in and they're taking it back. It's like building a house brick by brick and then taking those bricks apart and 